Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I take you step by step how to build and fly this foam board electric powered uh, F22 model. Let's get to it. So, I have begun construction of this foam board F-22. Do I know what I'm doing? Not really. But I'll take it step by step and let me share with you what I have done so far. The first thing that I always recommend is to get your um, onboard electronics working. I won't drag you through that process, but just a standard receiver. There'll be two servos, an electronic speed control of the motor. If this is a Park 370, it should be gobs of power. For what we're going to do on this model right here with a 28, 28 inch wingspan i'm not too too overly concerned of the weight right now i'll do a park flyer level of performance looking at a two cell lipo battery three cell you'll, you'll have a rocket i've seen what rick did at the field with his version the plans are available for download on the description this is how they print out your home printer I'll put a link in the description, a link up here about how you can very easily enlarge these plans to full size. What I did was the wingspan was about seven inches on this paper. I enlarged it 400% or times four to get a 28, um, uh, to get a, uh, a 28 inch wingspan model. I did the enlargement at FedEx. It's, it's incredibly easy to do. I showed you a picture, or I will, of what the um, enlarged plans look like. Of course, we have to cut those out. And here is what the full-size wing looks like cut out that we're going to trace onto the foam board. So again, these are all the pieces, full-size, the rudder, the hatch, the bottom, the fuselage, all full-size. We simply trace these pieces onto the foam board and cut them out. And what we have are the pieces that will go together for the model. You can see the fuselage here, um, the tail here, the sides of the bottom, and so forth. All these are on the plan, and you just have to study the plan a little bit. Um, clearly one fuselage, but there are two of the fins, two of the side pieces. And after this little segment, I'll show you the instructions and the RC Group's thread on this. They've got some great additional information that should put a lot of things into place once we do this belt here. So again, this is a little bit different. Um, the mid-mounted pusher engine, the foam board construction. But what they describe in the, in the directions is much like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. So just to give you an example of what we're doing, uh, here is the front part of the fuselage. The reason I have it in two parts, the foam, it's, it's longer than the foam board, so we just have to glue that together, and I'll do that next. These slots here are for the alignments of the various tabs that you go together. It's important to cut out those slots. You can trim them as necessary, otherwise you'll never get it aligned up as you put it together. So just to show you what will happen is, this is the canopy for the fuselage, the top of the fuselage, the wing. And it literally just fits into um, slots. So I'll be doing some trimming later on, but this is the fuselage on top. And then it's all worked out on the plans that this will fit into the bottom. And again, we'll trim it up and glue it, but that's an idea of how the forward part goes together to give the profile of the F-22 and then the wing plan form with the side intakes, the engine mounted back here and so forth. So, so the next steps will be putting all this together, gluing it, and, and it should build pretty quick now that everything's cut out with the tabs. So what we'll do now is take a quick, just a quick look at the um, six page directions that are downloadable from the um, description as well as the RC Group's description of this, the links in the description as well. Rick Cubbage on the right, good friend of the field. You can see he built one of my foam Bronco um, aircraft. Gave me the plans and instructions for the F-22. Here are the instructions. Everything you need is available for download in the description. In the description is a very good, about a six page booklet on how to build the F-22. It gives a lot of good information. It was a, a kit once upon a time. The company has since gone out of business. 
The good pictures of how to construct it, some techniques for building. It's really not a hard build. You have to study the diagram a little bit. This video will help out a lot. But there's just not too many parts, and they go together much like a three-dimensional puzzle, for lack of anything else. They have a rocket and park flyer. The hint is, depending on the type of motor you put in, it can do uh, different things. Center gravity, they say, is 3.25 inches behind that arrow. I went ahead and just plotted out the CG. You can look at the tabs for your model. This is the RC Group's uh, page on this. It was done a few years back, a link in the description. What's very helpful are these pictures of the F-22. They're uh, computer-aided design, 3D pictures that help a lot with understanding the construction. This is the top view with the flat wing and the tails. The side view, notice the front slopes down a little bit. That's built into the profile of the model. This is the uh, back view, and then just a good uh, forward view. You can see how things fit together with the tabs and underside view, all very helpful for understanding how to build this model. I enlarged the plans uh, at a local FedEx store. I have a, a video on this, a link on how to do it. This is a smaller plan, the full-size printout, very easy to do with a scanner. You just uh, give it to the guy and you go out with a full-size set of plans. This is the initial part of the wing assembly. This is the location for the two millimeter carbon rod that I used to reinforce the wing. You cut out a little channel to put in the rod and uh, the directions, and I highly recommend that you use epoxy for this for strength. Don't try to use a hot glue gun. Trial fit in the Park 370 motor. You can see how it goes right there. Six inch prop to fit between the two tail surfaces and the epoxy put in place. A little bit messy on the epoxy, but this is a prototype just to learn how to build the airplane. This is the forward section of the fuselage that will made to the aft section of the wing. That line, the vertical line, is the CG location, center gravity, so I can locate it easily. Uh, this is the plastic mount that Rick made for me on the motor, and more details how that goes into the finished model. This is the top and bottom of the vertical fuselage in place. The tabs just fit in place. It just locates perfectly, and it gives a pretty nice look to the model, top and bottom. See the, ele the elevons will be in place later on the back. We're in the beginning stages of building the F-22 fuselage um, and wing, or the plane actually. So here we are so far. Uh, this is a side view. I've done the top of the fuselage, the bottom. It just fits in uh, per the plan. I use epoxy to put all these together. I could use a hot glue gun, but there's a lot of fitting that has to be done for the notches. The glue dries so quickly. I think 500 epoxy is better for the working time and it'll be a stronger bond. I also glued the aft uh, wing assembly to the fuselage four body, just this line along here. The reason is this is longer than 30 inches, which is a foam board length. You're gonna to have to make a cut somewhere unless you have longer foam board. And I put an angle here just to kind of uh, center up uh, where that should be. Notice I made a huge rookie error here. This is the um, carbon reinforcing rod for the wing. I, put it in upside down. So this should clearly be on this side with the top of the fuselage here. I put it on here, unlucky for me. So that's why we build prototypes to learn from that, but that, that will stay that way. Also, you can see as we'll continue building the um, underside of the fuselage, things like this will fit into place to build. This will go in like this to build the underside. I'll do that later today. And also the back will be finished up. These will be the uh, elevons for the elevator and aileron functions of the model. Also, I will mount the motor in here. This is a Park 350 motor. You can use whatever you want, depending on the, the weight of the model. And uh, Rick Cubbage at the club, a good friend, made this um, on his own. It is home manufacturing um, get up additive manufacturing. And this is a very good plastic mounting. And what will happen is that will fit in just like this. And we'll eventually glue it in. And you can see how the motor all fits in in that manner. So I think that'll be OK. Before Rick gave this to me yesterday at the club field, this mount, I was just going to uh, make it out of wood, the plywood. You can do this as well. And you just have to cut and fit the round um, motor mount into place with uh, reinforcing around to make it uh, stronger, five minute epoxy for something like that. So this is where we are with the model. Uh, oh, the one other thing I wanted to point out, you'll see on the side view, it kind of caught me a little bit by surprise. The front slopes down a little bit, it curves down. 
I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe it's the outline of the fuselage. It was in the plans. But when you put the top and bottom uh, halves <clears throat> of the vertical fuselage together, it, it forces that, that slope down of the forward strengths of the fuselage. I just wanted to point that out. It's not a continuous flat thing all the way uh, along. So that's where we are for now. More to follow. This is a continuation of the build of the fuselage. These are the lower side panels just put in place. Notice they have to be angled in, so there's a little bit of a trial and fitting to make sure those are the appropriate angle. This is the bottom section of the fuselage with the tab epoxy in place. And again, you can trial fit this to make sure everything's in order with the tabs and the correct angle of the side pieces and that bottom piece is parallel to the top of the fuselage. Another view of those uh, side pieces angled in, and what I'll do is I'll take out those side pieces. You can see how I trimmed and beveled the side there to make sure that the side pieces are at the proper angle. Another view of the bottom piece with the rear tab glued in place. Again, the uh, cut and fit matches perfectly with the uh, fuselage. You can see this is just put into place and we'll eventually epoxy it to the back. And that epoxy lower portion will be the basis for putting in the side panel. So you want to make sure that is correct and parallel to the top of the fuselage. Here it is glued into place. See the tabs on the top and the bottom for the side pieces and they just fit right in. Very easy to epoxy everything in the proper location. The side pieces are now epoxied in place and this pretty much completes the construction of the aircraft. We'll have to uh, add these little inlet um, uh, sections to, to finish up the front of the fuselage. Those go in pretty easily with two tabs. And once those are epoxied in place, here is the aircraft. The elevons will be taped into place. The uh, vertical tail surfaces will be epoxied in later. We just don't need to be beating those up as we build the rest of the model. The next step is to make the elevons to cut to make sure they fit without any binding. I have a little notch in there. I use a popsicle stick with a hole drilled in for the control horns. That's an easy way to do something like this. And you can see they just fit into the slot and a little bit of 500 epoxy. They'll be held into place uh, just fine. I use clear tape to put on the elevons on uh, both sides. You can see the control horn there. Make sure you bevel the side of the elevon so that it can uh, go up and down. And that there's no binding anywhere. There's a lot of surface here. You just have to make sure it's clear. Yeah, and again, I use painter tape just to uh, trial fit them before I put on the regular tape. This is the F-22 so far. We made good progress today. You can see the side view, the top view, and the components installed on the bottom to clue the engine and the two Elevon servos. It's a three channel model with the Elevons taking two channels, the throttle, these uh, tail fins will be glued in tomorrow at the appropriate angle. The other thing on the bottom, I've put on some lips here and we have the hatch. I'm probably just gonna use some tape to hold that on, but the, uh, the hatch goes on like that for the bottom of the, of the fuselage. And just a standard electronic speed control receiver and then the battery. The battery I've just taped in place. I'm still trying to find the center of gravity. That's about where it is. I may have to add a little bit of weight up front to keep the CG from where it should be. Note also that I have uh, glued in the uh, motor mount onto the foam here. I'll reinforce that a little bit tomorrow. We're limited to about a six inch prop. I've got a six by four prop on the Park 370 motor. We can't go much more than that because the, the uh, tail fins, the vertical fins are along here. So the motor is restricted to that. So I have a, a six by four, a little bit more of a prop. These are just temporary tape to hold the uh, elevons in place because when I paint it tomorrow, I'll take those off to, to paint the model. So let's hook it up and just watch the controls, see how they work. So up, down, left, right. So those are the elevons in back. And then the throttle. I 
think it'll have enough thrust. It'll definitely be a park flyer. It won't be a rocket. I may experiment with a three cell battery pack to get a little bit more thrust, but I think that should be enough for the test flight. So that's where we are right now. Everything went to, together pretty well with the intakes. The bottom is a, it's kind of interesting design kit. This is a prototype. I'll trim off the tabs a bit, but just to see how everything goes together, I didn't spend too much time uh, beveling the various edges for the side things. Just these are more decorative than anything else, and I'm, I'm satisfied with the way it goes together. I will paint the top a color scheme. Uh, you'll notice. So I plan to paint at least the top surface uh, the color. Um, the real F-22s are all a, a gray uh, color scheme because they're air-to-air -air fighters to bend in, blend in with a, a normal sky, hazy sky, blue sky. And it's, a, it's a very effective uh, camouflage scheme for an air-to-air -air fighter. I also think that based on the very unique stealth coverings uh, coatings on the airplane, there's probably not a whole lot of benefit to have colorful different color schemes. So what I'm going to do, I did an internet search, I'll show it up here. Uh, the F-15s have a wide range of color schemes and I picked two, one from Israeli F-15s and another from the um, Aggressor Force out at Nellis Air Force Base for their Aggressor F-15s. I think I may make some pattern of that blue on top of the F-22 just to have a, a, a color scheme for that. And um, we'll do that tomorrow, and then I think we'll be ready for test flights to see how it flies. I've completed my prototype of the F-22 foam board model. Here it is here. I use poster acrylic paints just to give us a color scheme on top. And this is the finished product. Total weight came in at 15 ounces. Um, what I decided to do was use a three-cell LiPo. I need a little bit more weight in front to get it at the center of gravity. And I have, I'll put up here right now, um, a uh, top view of the model with a center of gravity location on it. It's not clearly located in the, in the uh, booklet. What I did just to show me the center of gravity, when I cut between the forward fuselage and the aft fuselage, this line right here, right, uh, join the two panels, that is the center of gravity location. So it'll be located any time. The three cells give a lot of extra power to this motor. It's a Park 370 with a six by four prop. Again, the six inch prop is limited because you have to fit between the two fins here. And that extra uh, going from two to three cells just gives it a, a boost of power, which is just pretty remarkable for the um, electric motors. So all that is in place. And the only other thing I wanted to point out is, as I did this, I get the bottom with just a contrast. It, it's going to be possible with a kind of in the sky with clouds, you may lose orientation on it. This will just help to say that this is the um, bottom part of the model. So I think we're all set. Uh, the hand, the, um, I'm just going to use tape for this prototype here for the hatch. I have a little bit of Velcro up here for the um, three cell LiPo battery. Everything fits in here. So I think we're in pretty good shape. It looks like good weather tomorrow. So we'll try to head out to the field and see if we can get a flight on this airplane. We're out here at the field. It looks like a pretty good day for a test flight. So here is the F-22. The battery is hitched up. Here's the bottom. Just use tape hinges. So let's take a look at the control surfaces. Up, down, left, right. I reduced the throw at about 80% what I had. I think that'll be enough. And the motor. I think it'll have plenty of power with the three cell battery. So, wish me luck. This no kidding is the first flight of the F-22. It's a little bit sensitive in pitch. I think I might reduce the throw a little bit more on the elevons. What I didn't quite realize, first of all, the pitch is a little bit sensitive because it's pushing the whole time. You don't have the tractor motor in front just pulling it along. The other thing about the elevons, because that pusher uh, prop is blasting the air over the elevons, you get very quick effect whenever you want to make a control movement for the aircraft. But it, it flies well. I felt comfortable flying it once I settled down. Just keep your speed up. This is the second flight. I know now to keep the power up, be a little bit easier on the controls. I think it flew a little bit better. Um, you see a lot of left turns. Yes, the plane does turn right. I did a few right-hand turns, just trying to keep it within sight and good for the video. But it's, uh, it looks good in the air, good profile, and um, it just it handles well once you settle down on the pitch.
One thing I want to point out here in this turn, I got just a little bit slow. You can see a little bit of wing rock. Immediately add power. You get um, control authority from the Elevons. You can keep your speed up with this aircraft, and it, it, it really flies. It really flies well. All right, so we completed the first two test flights of the F-22. I, I think it flies good. It's a jet, it goes kind of fast. You've got to keep your speed up. It needed absolute full power in the park zone 370 with the uh, 6x4 prop. It seemed to have sufficient power, but don't ever try to take off with less than full power. You need that. And you got to keep your speed up. Uh, the nose hunted a little bit as it was flying around. I think that's a combination of the pusher prop I probably have a little bit too much control on the elevons. I'll, I'll reduce those a little bit to make it a little bit smoother. Also, I think just a little bit of additional nose weight might help to, to keep it uh, in a better balance. But it looks realistic in the air. It's an easy build. It's fun to fly. It, it absolutely turns well with ele uh, elevons. There's no, no issue with that at all. Just got to keep your speed up and uh, stay on the sticks. And um, good luck with your F-22 build. Here are a couple bonus views of Rick's F-22. Rick made his from uh, Depron, a little bit stronger than my foam board. He's got a bigger engine. I think he uses a four cell battery. It is a rocket. It just goes straight up. Very nice paint scheme. Note that Rick included the ailerons and elevons for insane roll control. Uh, it flies nice. It just screams right along. Uh, very nice job for this model.